guys. I'm trying to be centered because I think my production team is gonna punk me today. I hope it's rubies or M&Ms or trapiche emerald. Can I just rip out the... Take a walk, guess. I, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like you guys are gonna prank me. You're gonna prank, prank. I feel like this is gonna fall down or something's gonna pop out. I feel like you guys are up to something. <laughs> I feel like my palms are sweaty. It's like an Angie Drew novel. What's coming up next? <laughs> Rotocrosite. Oh, great. It got me all psyched up for nothing. So what do you know about rotocrosite? Pink. And? Sometimes looks like bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't describe how it looks like bacon. I just need to pull it out of the box. Is If there's cooked bacon, hash browns, eggs, and ketchup in here, I'd be super happy. Yes, YouTube. I put ketchup on my eggs. There's gonna be bacon in here, right? One, two, three, bacon. Nope. Whoa, wow. I am so wrong today. Oh, rotocrosite, I don't even, what? Okay, that doesn't look like bacon at all. Where's the bacon? Is that the bacon? <laughs> it looks like bacon. Look up rotocrosite and bacon. No pranks. This is obviously a stone. Rotocrosite, I know of the Sweet Home Mine in Colorado. I know that they're not mining a whole lot. I absolutely love the stone because of the color and I'm gonna pull it out of the box right here. It is a really delicate stone. I would be worried if I dropped it. Not that I've ever dropped anything before. I mean, we do talk about Butterfingers and bacon. I feel like we're on kind of a food. I love to eat. Oh, I'm a real gem of a foodie. Oh, that was so good. Rotocrosite is known for its color. So it's kind of like a pinky peach color. This to me looks like a collector's piece. This is not something that you see every day. Because it's so delicate, you don't usually see it in jewelry. And that's actually why we have this pad right here is so, you know, it doesn't get nicked by the table or something. Off the top of my head, I can't think if I've ever seen it in jewelry. I feel like the cleavage on these, if I remember correctly, I think that that may be the natural habit of the stone. I've never seen another diamond ruby, sapphire, emerald, you know, quartz cut like this. I think that has something to do with the crystal system. Maybe, oh, I have a guest. Who's my guest? Elizabeth is my guest. We're really excited. She is one of my favorite geologists and one of my favorite lunch buddies. All right, everyone, one thing is different in this picture. See if you can figure it out. This look really good on you. All right, I'm gonna get a migraine. This is gemologist versus geologist round two. Ready? Put your dupes up. Oh, really? No, no I'm fighting. totally kidding. <laughs> Actually, you could probably whip me. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth, throw to Crowsite. I know it's from Colorado. It's from the Sweet Home Mine. And I know that there's really not any production coming out, but I do know the second source, what in that China? I've heard that China? Now, the story with Roto as of this year is in like 2018. Yeah. They have actually started to resume exploration. Wow. So this is actually that. a really big deal. For a long time, they didn't have enough Rotocrosite coming out of the mines to even support production. And so now they just kind of saved up enough and went, well, we'll give it one more shot. With Rotocrosite production, you're kind of just going along, following a vein of what you're looking for, hoping that you're going to break into a cavity that contains it. There's no guarantee. You could go an entire year without ever seeing any measurable production of Rotocrosite. I feel like all of gemology is basically like a big gamble because you spend so much money to dig into the ground and you hope that your calculations were right. And then you don't it know how much deal. you're going to get out. You don't know right. how much is gem quality. I guess you get paid the most to go treasure hunting. We, like, we, we, we kind of go treasure hunting. a fun hunt. treasure hunt. With Rotocrosite, you can have different grades of it. Yeah. And so these guys, because of the really pretty clarity, it's bright, it's that kind of cherry it's red look like pink. Podparasha Sapphire, sort of, too. I wouldn't call this pod color, though. I saw a little bit of orange. Well, it, can, it can have a little bit of an orange tint. But you are actually seeing internal cleavages I saw that, in the yeah, Rotocrosite. Cool. So you can kind of see, I don't know if they're really apparent, so but when seen... you hold it up, at least to me, I can see these lines running through it. I did see those, yeah. How many and cleavage directions are there? So this guy, it can break perfectly like a calcite crystal. It this like is calcite. actually technically a cleaved crystal. So this shape was once attached to rock and then they basically went, well, we're gonna take its natural beauty, cleaved off the rough parts of it and mm -hmm. then polished it. So if I was to sit here and heaven forbid break this rotocrosite, <laughs> you would actually see it break along those little tiny thin lines that you can see inside of it. In an area that is not a cleavage plane, the molecules are like really tight together. So try to karate chop me. She can't break it, right? So one of those little lines that we have inside there, that is a cleavage plane. So the cleavage plane, like the molecules are kind of loose. So karate chop me. Boom, cleaves 
quick. Did you like it? So I did like it, but so what Natalie's trying to say with her karate chop um, explanation <laughs> is that cleavage planes are the lines of weakness in the molecules bond. So these are actually dictated all the way down to the subatomic level. So the building blocks of this material naturally has areas of weakness. Now this is not the same for all materials, yeah, but like something that a lot of people don't know, and I've heard people actually do this and they always wonder how come it happened, but you can actually cleave a diamond. You can't scratch it because it's a tin on the hardness scale. It is the hardest thing we have. On the most, and, yeah. But you can find a plane of weakness in a diamond and actually ship it. So I've heard of that happening to people. But <laughs> don't think that's gonna happen yeah. to you. We don't wanna freak you all out. Basically, it's possible, but it takes a lot of force. Elizabeth is really responsible with her beautiful ring, so be like Elizabeth. She, um, yes you are. Oh, you don't really? go around knocking it. Be careful. Rhodochrosite, you agreed with me, it looks like bacon. So some rhodochrosite can look like bacon. It is actually completely serious. If you look it up online, you can find you online, strips so. of rhodochrosite material that looks like light, kind of a yellowish color into a pink color into a red color, and it really does look like a slab of bacon. It's really neat. Most of it's from Argentina. That's the bacon slab rhodochrosite. I knew of Colorado, and I thought China. Yes, China does have Where it. Where else? Have China, Argentina, and the U.S. But rhodochrosite was actually discovered in Romania That's cool. in the Ready? 1800s. So. One, two, three, and five. Okay. We kind of need to like switch need because switch. this is more you and that's more me. Have that. <laughs> so I wanted the gemstone and Elizabeth wanted the guest guy's mineral specimen. Go figure. You always want the mineral specimen. Oh yeah. So okay, I like gonna, that. That's cool. I have not ever seen this. So. Oh my gosh. That is you really can borrow pretty. mine and I'll borrow it. That is so cool, like this, that cleave right there, like look at those sharp lines and how those are just perfectly parallel cuts. You see the same thing here. You could literally pluck that piece out of the ground and it wouldn't look that much different than this. That's the insane thing about cleavage planes is normally the way that the crystal forms anyway, it looks very similar to how you can actually cleave them. So it's all just patterns I probably and wouldn't crystal put, math. I wouldn't put it in jewelry. Wrote a no. I have seen it in jewelry. Really? Not mm -hmm. in a ring though. I That'd have seen it nervous. in a very protected setting. Really? I would not feel safe having rhodochrosite in a ring. I would feel safe having it in my collection with a very pretty acrylic vase. Would you say this is more of a collector's piece? I would definitely say it's more of a collector's piece just because number one you don't get as much material. The gemstones are usually they're pretty artisan cut. They're not just like mass produced. Yeah that is not a normal cut. No but I think it's really pretty. Yeah it's really pretty. I love the color. It really does look like a piece of candy doesn't it? Well that's why I love it is it just looks so unreal. The other thing that I love about it is it's an American gemstone. So yeah, like that's true. The classic locality for beauty. Oh my gosh, I just thought of another place where rhodochrosite's from. Where? South Africa. Let's it's go. Super big deal for rhodochrosite because really? they have a different form than the stuff that you find in Alma. It's a popular gemstone. I don't think it's a very prolific stone. You see a lot of it, but a lot of it's older. Okay. Now there's newer material coming out of China, but it's not near as pretty. Something I've always wondered, how do they pull this out of the ground? And like, how do they find this and pull it out of the ground so like that mineral specimen looks so perfect? I almost think mining mineral it's, specimens could be tougher than mining gemstones. I would think it would be, because when you you're mining materials perfectly. for gemstones, you don't have to care if the material stays intact. You just make more gemstones if you break it. Yeah, you want to maximize good Well, I mean, rough, you want to maximize it, but with a tanzanite crystal or something like that, that you don't have to care if it has a perfect termination and to preserve that without nicking it as you pull it out of the pocket. Well, basically what they do is they go in there with chisels and hammers and by hand remove the rock. So what you can see here is the actual material that it's normally found in, it's the host is rock. Is that pyrite? I see some gold specks. So it yeah, it's, like pyrite. it's pyrite. You can find rhodochrosite in something called a hydrothermal vein. And so basically what this means is you have really, really hot fluid moving through the rocks in these pockets and gaps. Mm -hmm. And because it's so hot, it's just dissolving other minerals and elements as it comes through the rock. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets to certain areas, it'll cool a little bit and begin to deposit things. There's and a lot of stones that are made. There's a lot of things that are hydrothermal. I believe that there's a pocket that's a pretty famous pocket in the Sweet Home Mine, and it's called the Porcupine Pocket. And it's because a lot one. of the specimens came out and they were on beds of just okay. tons and tons of needles of Tribute. quartz. So it looks like a little porcupine. So when they go in there and they chisel it, there's a lot of like post-production tweaking of these mineral specimens. So what they'll do is because they had to choose a spot to actually dig this out of the rock wall, they clean the edges up and remove crystals that may have been damaged in the process. Well, that's why you can get stuff like this is because they go, well, it may have been damaged, but we can make this into something else. This came in a nice box. I suspect this is in our president's collection. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice stone. It's a president's collection stone, which maybe we can get some more of on this show. That's kind of a big deal. 
Actually, yeah. it's a really big deal. Here. Yeah, they're one ofs and they're usually very fine you examples see, of their species. I think we should do a YouTube episode all about like the President's Collection so we can do like the best of. You're doing like, one. I know, yeah. I'm doing one, but I just, I think that'd be like a cool episode. We could do like- A couple the, stones Yeah, or like four or five species. To give you an idea, this piece is- it's Probably mid-grade for Roto. If you were to take this and put it all over a specimen, it would quadruple the Look price tag. Look how clean that is. I know, it's really nice. Roto is one of those stones that because it is so pretty and it's so bright red that even if it was common, I think that the price tags on them would still be rather high. It's one of my favorites just from an aesthetic standpoint because I love the bright red on the darker mineral specimen base. We talk about different qualities of gemstones. I mean, there's always a variance. There is mineral specimen quality, and then there's gemstone specimen quality, and then there's like gem quality. So there's a market for each. So that's something to think about if you're buying yourself gemstones or if you're collecting stones. Don't but be afraid if you don't get top advice, shelf or a crow I was gonna say, word of advice though, always get the best that you can afford at the time. Don't shortchange yourself because let me tell you, I have bought stuff and been like, well, I'll just take the cheaper one. And then I go, yeah, I could have splurged even just a little bit and gotten one that I would be much happier with in the long run. Then instead of going, well, 10 years from now, when I can find a better one, I might just keep the other one instead of going to replace it. Maybe the ones that you maybe don't want anymore, you could decorate with. This is black background. This needs some spicing up. Ripping on <laughs> the <laughs> background, man. I also think this is a good lesson about color. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different varieties of color. Oh. I was gonna tell you, so the Argentinian, what we call the bacon rhodochrosite, is actually where the rhodochrosite formed in stalactites, kind of like you get in caves made out of calcium carbonate, but instead it's made out of rhodochrosite. Rhodochrosite is very closely related to calcite, mm -hmm. and so it is a manganese carbonate. Calcite is calcium carbonate, mm -hmm. so they're actually both part of the calcite group. So they have a lot of the same crystal structure and a lot of the same properties. With the rhodochrosite, as it forms, it can have a replacement of that manganese with magnesium and zinc, and it actually can cause the color to diminish in the rhodochrosite, making it more yellow or pink, oh, cool. rather than being bright red. And so you'll get these really awesome zoned stalactites that form in these caves. They're really, really fun. I really love the little ROMs. I just think they're really cute. I had to sort those. That was oh my really, really fun. You sort a bunch of ROMs. By color and clarity and size. It was really fun to do. What's a ROM? Because yeah, we keep, saying, we keep that. saying that. So a ROM is actually referring to a rhombohedral crystal. It's just referring to the shape of the specimen here of this little rhodochrosite crystal. And these crystals themselves are called rhombohedrons. And then you've got your little rhombohedral shape. So if you ever hear us refer to a ROM, just know that that's what we're talking about. We're lazy. We just don't want to say the whole We're pretty word. lazy. So it's kind of like shorthand that you develop when you're taking notes. You just ROM. It's ROM. 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 Rom-com. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's us! We've been shipped and rom com So obviously here we've got like one of the bigger crystals, which is very similar to right here. Now, some of the reason these aren't quite as shiny is because they're not polished. This is how they basically wiped the mud off of them or, you know, dust or anything like that coming out of the mines. They would get a higher polish here, which is a really pretty luster on this piece, actually. So you've got your rhombohedral crystals. The crystals in South Africa can actually be what we call a dog tooth. Oh. And they really do look like a dog too. These guys from Alma are stunning. They're world class. If you want just really excellent rhodochrosite quality, go for Sweet Home. Go to Colorado. So I want you to take a closer look. As a gemologist, I'm always looking at clarity and how good the crystal is. This one, you don't see as many internal characteristics. This one you do. So take a closer look, comment below and tell me what you think. What one do you prefer? The ROM or the gemstone? I might agree with I you. I like the ROM. Holy guacamole. Oh, I no. just agree with you on something. Is the sky falling or are we about to get struck by lightning? Where are the pigs? Are they flying? Elizabeth, thank you for coming on the show today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm just looking at it because it's pretty. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I do like mineral specimens, but a well-cut gemstone is, is rather lovely. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching today. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you don't like and subscribe, Elizabeth and I aren't gonna come back on the show together. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs>